Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where OP embarrasses his egotistical boss in front of the entire company. Our next Reddit post is from Taran Misu. A few years back, I started my job as a mechanic, and I was informed of a mandatory monthly go-kart race in the local track, which was promoted by my boss and the owner of the company. The boss did not care if you enjoyed it or not. He booked the time slot, and we all had to show up. It took place right after working hours, and we had to pay for our own tickets. It was supposed to be a team building exercise, but I could see that the boss really liked race cars through the various pictures and trophies in his office. During that week, in anticipation of the race, my boss would get really hyped up. The race became the only topic of conversation that week, and I was told by colleagues that this was really important. I knew that on the evening of the race, I had to pick up my girlfriend and that would clash with the race, so a couple of days before, I told my supervisor that I wouldn't attend the race. It was after hours and on my own dime anyway, so I didn't think that it would be a problem. Some 20 minutes later, I'm summoned to the boss's office and he is not looking happy. He tells me that building team spirit is one of his priorities and that I'm new there, so I had to give a lot of focus to this monthly event if I was to keep working there, because this was part of the core culture of the company. I really needed that job, so I just said, sure thing, boss. On the evening of the event, I drive to the racing track, and upon arrival, I see my colleagues all in jeans and t-shirts, and my boss in full racing attire. He had racing overalls, racing boots, gloves, and even a custom helmet. It dawned on me the reason for the event and why so much attention was given to it. Kart racing was kind of his thing. With about 15 racers, I asked to start dead last. The boss man overheard me talking and said, We're here to race, not just drive around slowly. Up until that point, I wasn't really paying much attention, but I decided to comply and show how important the corporate culture was to me. Starting from the last position, I overtook all the other carts, including boss men on the outside of a fast corner. For those who don't know, overtaking on the outside is often seen as a bold and arrogant move. After just a few more laps, I reached my boss again, and as I was about to lap him, he went to the pits and stepped out. I duly won the race, and when I made it to the bar after the event, someone told me the boss had left. At the bar, the topic of the evening was how I'd outraced everyone and how the boss, who had won all the races ever since, was livid with my performance. Too bad for him. I guess I forgot to add on my resume that I raced go-karts competitively as a kid, so I knew what I was doing and I shattered his Ricky Bobby dreams. After that, I was always courteously invited, but never again required to show up to these events. I went a few times, but I arrived late on purpose so I would just take part in the bar thing and not the race. Was anyone else imagining Michael Scott in this story? Because this is the most Michael Scott story that I've ever read. Our next Reddit post is from Sush Coons. When I was a poorly paid and overworked adjunct professor, I once had a student ask me to take another look at his B- paper, something that I would do anytime a student felt strongly they deserved a better grade. This particular paper was messy. It had a good argument and decent research, but it had clunky writing and plenty of grammatical errors. Still, I agreed to take another look. On my second pass, one sentence caught my attention. I assumed the student had failed to cite a quote and I searched for the quote online. What I found was the original version of the student's essay published in a Yale journal. He had plagiarized the argument and research but rewritten the paper in his own words. Amazingly, that was almost as much work as just writing an original paper. I called him into my office, put both papers side by side, and asked if he had anything to say. He tried to pretend to be confused, but I cut that off. I let him off easy with an F in the class, as long as he finished all the assignments and tests so he could still learn as much as possible, which he did. So, I never had to report him for plagiarism. He could have just gotten away with his B- if he hadn't been so smug about it. My guess, OP, is that when he got back a B-, he was incredibly pissed off because he was thinking, How dare that professor give me a B-? This is a Yale research paper, and I know that this is a high-quality essay, so this is unfair, blah 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 blah. Never mind the fact that the problem with the paper wasn't the research, it was his terrible writing skills. Our next Reddit post is from Wafer. Some context for you. My town is basically on the edge of nowhere. We have a medical center for basic stuff, but a full hospital is like 30 to 40 minutes in any direction depending on where you choose to go. With that in mind, we get people from a huge surrounding area that come to our town center for tests, medical exams, etc. 
Maybe as many as 50 small communities use our center on a daily basis, so it's constantly busy. The center itself is quite small compared to hospitals in the city. The various clinics in the basic ER take up most of the space. However, there's also an area by the front doors for the public to sit in if they're waiting for a ride or they're visiting a doctor. This waiting area is the subject of my story today. One day, during the first summer of lockdown here, I had to go to that medical center for tests. So, some things to know about me. I am challenged with multiple disabilities. I'm legally blind, have significant mobility and balance issues, and a rather severe heart condition. As such, I use a walking frame, and I use publicly provided transportation for disabled people. This particular day I'd finished my tests early, and I had to wait 45 minutes for my scheduled transportation to pick me up. I figured, no problem, I'll just sit in the waiting area and, well, wait. I shuffled over to the seats with my walker plainly evident, and I was confronted by a new sign that said staff only. Say what now? I looked at all the empty seats and vacant tables and I turned to the clerks at the entrance. I said, can I please have a seat in the waiting area until my transportation comes back? No, it's staff only. You need to wait outside. Um, I can't stay standing for 45 minutes waiting for transportation, and I gestured to my plainly visible walking frame. Not my problem. There are benches to sit on outside. The benches are full, and we're supposed to be social distancing, not cuddling up to random strangers on a park bench. If you want, I suppose I could let you take a wheelchair out and sit on that. And how am I supposed to manage a wheelchair and my walking frame at the same time? Again, not my problem. If you won, you can call management when you get home. Are we done here? I guess we are done, and I went outside to find a spot to wait. Well, I stood outside for 45 minutes while the sun beat down on me on what turned out to be a 104 degree day. As I stood there, I noticed that there was a line of patients growing steadily longer, also standing outside in the heat waiting to be let inside the building. Some of them looked well, but let's face it, nobody comes to a medical center because they feel 100% well. Most of them looked quite ill, and some were looking pretty faint by the time they got through those doors. By the time my transportation arrived, I was badly sunburned, thirsty as hell, exhausted, and feeling more than a bit faint myself. My driver was shocked, and he insisted on walking me to my front door when we got home to make sure that I was okay. The rest of the day was a complete loss. I spent it drinking water, sleeping, and nursing the sunburns on my shoulders and face. I was a mess! The next day, however, I was pissed. I had plenty of time to recover and think, and I kept coming back to that line of patients standing in the heat. The more I thought about it, the angrier I got. So, the malicious compliance. The clerk's smug words danced through my sun-baked brain like a mantra. You can call management when you get home if you want. So, I called the medical center's management. What followed was a half-hour conversation with the sweetest lady. She was so nice and so upset when I told her about what happened the day before. She was especially concerned when she found out about the line of people waiting outside on what turned out to be the hottest day of the summer that year. After our talk, the manager promised to look into it and get back to me. Now, normally, that's sort of a brush off, right? Not so with this lady. Two days later, she called me back. It turns out, she had spent the entire day before sitting at the clerk's desk observing things that went on. Things like patients being forced to stand in the rain waiting to get into the center, or patients being poorly spoken to by the same clerk. And the cherry on top? At one point, a tiny elderly lady tried to sit down in the waiting area, and the same clerk ran over and rudely shoved her aside and snapped, Staff only! He did this with her boss sitting right there! The manager went over, tore down the signs, apologized to the lady, and helped her take a seat. Then, she took the clerk into her office for a chat. As a result, the medical center was immediately restructured. The staff was moved to an unused gift shop, the waiting room was returned to the public, and best of all, the registry desks were moved, so patients no longer had to stand outside waiting to get inside the building. Oh, and I never saw that clerk working there again. Our next Reddit post is from Rum Bun Bun. This is my husband's story from a few years ago. He was an equipment salesman, and he had a company pickup that he brought home at night and on weekends. His company did not allow it for personal use, aside from driving it to and from work. Some of the workers took advantage of having a pickup and did use it for personal use, and the company installed GPS systems on all company vehicles at the first of the year. 
My husband was pretty miffed because he hadn't misused the truck, but he figured that he had nothing to hide, so he shrugged it off. In February, he had to attend a trade show on Saturday. This triggered the GPS, and he got a nasty call from his boss who was located in another state. My husband had to provide documentation that he was attending a company-sanctioned event. He felt like he was being babysat. This happened a couple of other times as well. One Saturday that spring, he backed the truck out of the garage and onto the driveway to get the lawnmower out. After he finished mowing, he pulled the truck back into the garage. You guessed it, this triggered the GPS twice, and on Monday, his boss called him and chewed him out. My husband tried to explain, but his boss was still mad. You know that you are not to drive the company truck on the weekend. I was moving the truck out of the garage so I could get my mower out. Does your report show how far each trip was? They were 0.0025 miles each. He paused as he seemed to realize how short of a distance these trips were. But, well, that doesn't matter. No driving after hours or on the weekends. This is being noted in your file. So, on the weekends, he either parked the truck on the street or the driveway. A few weeks later, his compliance became malicious. We live in the Midwest, where thunderstorms, tornadoes, and hailstorms are not uncommon. We were under a storm advisory with a strong possibility of hail. I asked my husband, should you move your truck into the garage? You'd think so, but today is a Sunday, and I'm forbidden from driving my truck even a few feet, so it's gonna stay where it is. As hailstones the size of quarters came raining down, my husband stood looking out the window at the truck, grinning. My husband loved explaining the damage to his boss and reminding him why the truck was no longer parked in a nice, safe garage. When he reported the damage, he reminded his boss that it was a shame that he wasn't allowed to move the truck into his garage when he became aware that a storm was coming. The boss knew damn well that he had maliciously followed policy. The policy was rewarded a few weeks later, but I'm not sure if my husband caused it. That was r slash malicious compliance, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.